KXBS, the voice of Stockton Morning Show. Show, 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 show. Hello, welcome to Chef Tobias Cooks, here where we have kitchen conversations with professional chefs, cooks, home cooks, bakers, oh, and people that just can't cook. So join us every week for our kitchen conversations and learn a thing or two. And I don't burn nothing in my kitchen. Hey, there's my son. Hey, Dad. Um, what's wrong with your voice? There is nothing wrong with my voice. Well, it's just sort of. Hello, Dad. Susan? Guys, I think it's about time to get in the car and maybe see some green things. What are these green things you speak of? This weekend, unplug. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. My name is Josh, and you're listening to KXVS, the voice of Stockton, 92.1 FM. Da 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 da, sha ba di da do da 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 da, sha da ba da di da 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 da, sha da la da di da do da da da, sha da ba da di da 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 da, sha da ba da bi da do da 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 da, sha da ba da bi da 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 da, ee sha da ba da di da, sha tu ba is good. Hello, 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 Thursday morning, yes, Chef Tobias Cooks with Kitchen Conversation, the voice of Stockton.org. I am so excited to be here this morning. So this morning, we're going to kick it off a little bit different. We're going to bring on our first de- our first guest, one of our two guests this morning. So Alex, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. We're going to do, do a it. sweet treat this morning. Is that mm, okay? It's always good. You know, May 17th is what? Small Business Month. So we are bringing on Colleen from Colleen's Cupcakery. All right. And what did you bring for us today? Today I brought candy apples. Candy apples. Mm. <laughs> and what kind of candy apples are these, Miss So Colleen? I have white chocolate oh. with um, Snickers candy apple, and then I have a watermelon cherry. With okay, us. see, I didn't know it was these flavors, Alex. <laughs> I thought it was just white chocolate and peach. So uh, you, <laughs> I'm going to have to pick off the candy apples, right? <laughs> so, Miss Colleen, there's a story between us, yes. but the story that I want to tell between us is that my son loves you candy apples so you know (laughs) Alex I took him to the fair like not too long ago the six-year-old and it was some caramel apples and he was like why they not blue (laughs) (laughs) and I said well they're caramel he was like no but they not blue because he got the what was it the cotton candy it was a cotton candy apple it was a cotton candy apple Mm. but I first met I first met Miss Colleen at uh, it was a a mixer Mm. and she had these candy apples and I bought I think I bought I don't know how many I bought but I bought a lot (laughs) of candy apples right and I wasn't really tripping because you know I'm like I'm support you know and got home and put them on the table and I was like oh this is kind of (laughs) good so ever since then I've really been a fan of your candy apples okay so tell us about the candy apple what got you started with the candy apples so with the candy apples I had a friend of mine Mm -hmm. send me a uh, a picture of a candy apple and she said can you make this I Mm -hmm. said um I don't know. Let me see. So I, I YouTube the recipe and um, I went to the kitchen and I said, okay, let me try to make this apple. And I made the apple and it turned out great. And so I've been experimenting with different flavors and different uh, ways to make um, the candy apple unique to me. Mm-hmm. And that's how the that's how uh, the candy apple became one of my signature items. So what is the most strangest or craziest candy apple that you have made? So the the strangest one I got a request for a Skittles waterfall candy apple, <laughs> and they wanted me to make the Skittles bag uh, appear like it was floating in the air, and with the uh, Skittles floating down the stick onto the apple. Okay, that's so, complicated just for me to even right. think about it. <laughs> so, but I mastered that apple. It, it, there mm-hmm. is a picture of it on my website, and it was. A labor of love. (laughs) (laughs) A labor of love. So when you get people, they see the candy apples, Do are they like amazed? Like what is some of the first comments that you hear? Some people think that Mm -hmm. they're just ornaments. They don't know that they're actually edible. Mm -hmm. So I always tell them I can make any apple, any flavor. Mm -hmm. So Any apple, any flavor. I like the green apples. 
What do you like, uh, Alex? Green apples. Green apples, me too. So what's your favorite flavor? Uh, you, you only had just the regular? Just the regular candy apple. Oh, he ain't. Oh, he is yeah, a yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know. Pineapple apple. apple. Uh, a pineapple. Pineapple's my favorite fruit. Yeah. So, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> he came alive. He came alive. We're going to hold you to that, right? Okay. No, we really are. No, seriously, we okay. are. We're going to hold you to that. Yes. Yeah, so thank you so much. So tell everyone, how can they find you again? You can find me on Facebook mm-hmm. at uh, facebook.com slash Colleen's Cupcakery. And I do have a website at www.colleenscupcakery.com. All right. So you hear that in honor. May is Small Business Month. And we are here presenting calling. Colleen's Cupcakery. Give me your information one more time. It is Colleen's Cupcakery.com and you can find me at Facebook.com slash Colleen's Cupcakery. All right, so you heard it here with Chef Tobias Cooks with Kitchen Conversations, the voice of Stockton.org. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. Me and Alex are going to decipher up all these candy apples right here. I think Colleen could go home with one. You can have one. (laughs) (laughs) We work for food. (laughs) <laughs> we'll be right back. Chef Tobias Cooks. We'll have more information on Chef Tobias Cooks on our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and also our Instagram page. Also, please go to thevoiceofstockton.org, subscribe there, and find out how to donate and be a sponsor. Yay! <laughs> we'll be right back. 911, what's the nature of your emergency? The importance of your house number is critical to the future of your recovery and health. The longer the response time, the longer the recovery time. Faster 911 response times are directly related to improved 90-day recovery. 10,000 lives a year could be saved as a result of a one-minute time savings. Save a minute, save your life with reflective house numbers. For more information, visit readyforrescue.com.
KXVS Broadcasting from Stone Tube Studios is the voice of Stockton. Hello, 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 Chef Tobias Cooks with Kitchen Conversation here Thursday morning where we talk to chefs, cooks, bakers, home cooks, home bakers, and all of the culinary world in between. I am so excited today. Yes, so May is small business month All right. and would not be better to bring on someone who knows about small businesses and have great experience great insight of it so if this is your area if you like to start your own business or if you already have your own business and you would like to learn how to improve your business um instead of you paying 750 million dollars to somebody to give you a logo on the website and tell you that's good here's some free information for you today so drum roll introduce yourself let's go introduce yourself yeah, hey everybody, my name is J.D. Stewart. I'm currently uh, CEO of Stygian Corporation. Uh, we're a company that can private label any type of spirit for you and bring it to market by our technology. So we're really excited to be bringing that forth uh, over the next couple of months. So i um, here today to talk with Chef Tobias about business, how to scale up fast, and uh, also how to um, bring your dream to reality. So I'm really excited. I wanted to thank you for uh, allow me to come out and speak and also thankful for it for the Lord for opening up this opportunity oh well thank you thank you it's been a, it's been some progress between us right a lot of progress <laughs> a lot of progress a lot of people you know I, I had this conversation before it was some way and the conversation is um build friendships right know the difference between friendships and uh business deals right you uh, have to know the difference. Um, if you build a relationship based on a friendship, based on loyalty, based on respect, based on trust, right. the business is going to come. I agree. That's going to come. I agree. It's going to automatically be there. And when it does come, guess what? It's going to come full circle. Right. Everything is going to be covered with it. All right, so tell us a little bit about your business. Yeah, we're, we're I'm, I'm really excited about our business. First of all, I want to talk about my team. I got a okay. bad team. A team is important. Team, team is, you know, you can't do it without your team. So, yes. Uh, I've got a gentleman who has um, built the back end mm -hmm. on Facebook, who's building our technology. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a gentleman who is very, very... Hollywood. Um, Don't Hollywood. forget your camera. Okay, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is new to me. Um, so a gentleman who's um, got several years in the spirits industry, um, also uh, very, very adept to understanding business and a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I've got a young lady who actually helps scale up wine.com, who's mm -hmm. on our team that's over our marketing. So I'm very excited. And then we also have a, our board. You know, I've got a gentleman that uh, sold a beverage company, um, mm -hmm. African American. We're African American owned, by the way. Yes. And um, so we're really excited about what we're getting ready to do because what we're doing is disruptive. Mm -hmm. If you don't go into business to be disruptive, you're just a me too. <laughs> right. So you, you got you got to do something different. Yes. That's going to shock mm -hmm. the world. So we're here to shock the world. We're here to change the spirits industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you go to a bar. And you drink. Mm -hmm. How many African American companies do you see represented in that bar? Alex. Probably none. <laughs> right? right. So we're we're here to right. to uh, give people the opportunity from celebrities, mm -hmm. from uh, restaurants that want to create their own private label, uh, mm -hmm. bars that want to create their own private label. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to do that and do it fast, but we're going to do it through technology because yes. you know I've got over. 
25 years of supply chain experience, business development experience, mm-hmm. and sales experience, and then also working to develop small businesses so they can do business with Fortune 500 companies. So very excited about that. And, um, you know, me and you bounce back mm-hmm. and forth about ideas of how yes. we can put together mm-hmm. bourbon-based products and a few other things, which bourbon is going to be our first product release. It's yes, let's concept. talk about that. Yes. You know, I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, all bourbons are whiskeys, but not all whiskeys are bourbons, obviously. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have the opportunity to bring, knock on wood, the first African-American bourbon mm-hmm. uh, to the market through our platform. It's mm-hmm. called the Edge Platform. So um, as a function of doing that, we want to open up doors for folks. We want to give mm-hmm. people the opportunity to say, hey, you can do this, right? So if you could do this with liquor, you can do with everything else. Now, mm-hmm. obviously, the regulatory environment is... is uh, is is difficult Mm -hmm. because you got to deal with the atf you got to deal with abc you've got to deal with uh doing business across state lines yes so um so so there's some hurdles that you have to get over to Mm -hmm. do it so we'll be launching shortly um our new website should be up uh by i'm always looking this way okay hollywood Hollywood, all the lights hollywood (laughs) all right but um so we should be launching our new website over the next Mm -hmm. couple days uh so we'll be launching that on facebook letting everybody know about that and uh, you'll be able to see the fullness of who we are. So okay, really so excited. give us the Facebook page and the website one more time. <laughs> the website is stygiancorporation.com. Mm-hmm. And the Facebook page is going to be stygianspirits.com. Uh, so we're really excited about it. Um, we're in the process right now of working with certain uh, celebrities. Mm-hmm. Um, can't name them uh, just yet. And also uh, certain business entities and folks that are already in the spirits industry. Mm-hmm. They want to private label uh, their own spirits. All right, that's exciting. You make me want to get a spirit, huh, Alex? So we need to call it. We need to call it Tobias. We can we can do a hemp infused vodka for you. Oh, or Alex, cannabis infused vodka. What do you, what do you vodka. think? What do you think for? I don't You're know about cannabis. Cal- I don't know about cannabis. No, no cannabis. I don't know about cannabis. What do you think, Alex? Sounds good to me. Alex is like <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> He's like, whatever, right. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, so you know what? I'm really excited about that. That is very um, exciting. And like you said, um, we do have to uh, find ways to disrupt um, the food world and also do it in special niche. Right. You know, have our own niche, have what we're good at, and not so necessarily uh, be a stereotype about it. Right. Um, for instance, you know that I do cannolis. Your cannolis are the bomb. Thank you. Right, they are. Thank you. And so we could do a bourbon-based cannoli. (laughs) (laughs) But I could. I mean, you know. Yes. I mean, I'm always monetizing everything. I even monetize stuff. Yes. So let's get into it. Let's talk about business. Yeah. Someone um just uh wants to do business. Here's my thing. Um, when people ask me questions, I always say. Whatever you're good at is a business. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. So, so, so if you, this is what I always tell. I feel like I should be taking notes. No, don't don't <laughs> take notes. Don't take notes. Mm-hmm. But um, this is one of the things I tell entrepreneurs that mm-hmm. what you do is a reflection of you and who you are. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but also your passion is being monetized so Mm -hmm. you're monetizing your passion so the million dollar question is how do you monetize your passion uh one of my mentors told me said jd he said ideas are worth a dollar Mm -hmm. but execution is worth a billion yes so you monetize Mm -hmm. your passion but then you put the right people around you to be able to execute it so that's one of the first places i want to start Mm -hmm. that your village and how you go to war in business mm-hmm. is vital. Yes. Because if you don't have the right folks around you, you're mm-hmm. not going to be successful. No man's an island. We all know that. Mm-hmm. And I found through this journey and starting Stygian mm-hmm. uh, with my partners that we've got to have the right group around us. Because mm-hmm. if you don't have the right team around you, you're not going to be successful. So how do you identify the right team? Well, first of all, I would say do it through relationship. Mm-hmm. So... Um, one of my business partners, his name is Craig Humphreys. Craig has seen me fail. Mm-hmm. He's seen me, um, you know, start a business and fail, but he's also seen me be resilient in it. And he's also seen my success. So mm-hmm. you want people around you that have seen you fail, that mm-hmm. have seen your worst and have seen your best. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want you want to have people around you that understand what your purpose is. And then not only that, but also have the skill set to be able to execute on it. So everybody on our team has a unique ability to be able to bring the Stygian vision mm-hmm. to fruition. Mm-hmm. So so essentially, 
I couldn't do this without um, without Harry Timmons, mm-hmm. right? So Harry is, you know, he's based out of Florida, but um, I did business with Harry for over, you know, 15 years uh, at a company called Granger. Mm-hmm. And um, and Harry and I's relationship, it, it, it went far beyond that. And so when the opportunity came for me to start Stygian, it's one of the first folks that I reached out yes. to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, then there's Sean Granberry. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's also you know Lisa Love, who's on our team, and then also uh, our our executive admin. You mm-hmm. know, uh, Beverly, mm-hmm. absolutely amazing. So these are people that I know that mm-hmm. I've got a relationship with, but all of these folks will mm-hmm. hold you accountable. Yes, for your vision, mm-hmm. you got to have people around you that'll hold you accountable. Um, that'll challenge you. You know, I get mad at everybody on the team. Mm-hmm. They don't know it. Absolutely. Well, maybe they do, but mm-hmm. they'll say, no, nah, this doesn't look right. Yes. Try this. You want people that will sharpen you. Iron mm-hmm. sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. And most of all, you want a strong spiritual context of who your team is. Yes. You know, so if you don't have that strong spiritual context, um, then what binds you together mm-hmm. to be able to see the your, your, your vision manifest? Mm-hmm. So... Team and, and, and your village is vital for your success. Yes. If you, my thing is your uh, your core village stays the same, correct. but your village will consistently change. That is correct. Um, an example for me, I've had people who worked for me. I've worked for people. I have have worked for people that worked for me. Okay. <laughs> Right. You know, um, and relationships, they they will grow. They will change. Your village will change right. in and out. However, consistency yes. is key. Right. If you are very consistent in what you believe in, if you're very consistent in your product, if you're consistent in your work, right. and you're consistent in your vision, that part will stay. Right. But as it grow, it is necessary for your village to grow or your village to change. Um, and oftentimes people don't understand that. They get emotional about that. And that's okay. We all have emotions. But we all have to understand in order for us to level up, mm-hmm. in order for us to elevate, then those changes is necessary. That- some right. people come into the business with the different with the partner and leave with the different partner. Uh, I've experienced that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yes, me definitely. too. Me too. And 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 oh, me too. And and that partner left with money. My money. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I've experienced that as well. Um I've I've pretty much experienced probably <laughs> Right. All kinds of stuff, you know, um, but what you mentioned was key. So finish talking about that. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. this, I have a saying that if you haven't, if you haven't starved with me, you're not Mm -hmm. eating with me. Oh, you hear that, Alex? So that means that. No sandwich for us, Alex. So that means like if you, if you haven't bled in the trenches with me of entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're not battling together. And explain that just a little bit more. Just just a a tad bit more so people could grasp that concept so a lot of people don't recognize so i, you and know, do I was raised do, do it conservative conser- okay i'm cool with that. okay you got it i am conservative but okay I, I got you i got you um so you know being raised on a farm one of the things mm-hmm. that my stepfather would always tell me is like son what pressure make water go uphill mm-hmm. right but pressure also will show the integrity of a pipe mm-hmm. so you need to see your friends and who you're partnering with under pressure Mm -hmm. some will fold and Mm -hmm. those that fold not meant to be with you Mm -hmm. um when you fail Mm -hmm. who's around you Mm -hmm. that will tell you who's really with you um and but then also what do they bring to the table one thing that i've noticed is that there's people that talk a lot in all of this but they don't deliver nothing oh yeah you know so um (laughs) we need those hype men though we do. We just need to know how where to place them at. I'm cool with the hype man, but you know, at the end of the day, I don't want to eat dinner with them because there's no substance to a hype man. So that's just my perspective. Oh, that. You know, so I can think of some good famous hype men. <laughs> well, Don King, right? You know, God bless America. And nobody else. I mean, that's allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Right. All right. Yeah. right. So. All right. So someone, um, they come to you uh, and they say, "Oh, I want to start this business, or I want to do this business." What is the What is the first piece that you will walk them through? I'm gonna tell them, "Don't do it." If they look at me <laughs> like I'm crazy, because being an entrepreneur and for the faint of heart. No. 
you know, you got to understand that there's going to be a lot of sleepless nights. Um, there's going to be, you know, if you're in a relationship or marriage, you know, yes. like yesterday I was listening, mm -hmm. you know, when we were talking, he was mm -hmm. like, your husband's running you around yep. town helping you out. You know, you got a strategic <laughs> partner. Yeah. And I was thinking. Alex, yeah, Alex yeah. knows. Alex right. knows, you know that Juan is our chauffeur, right, Alex? Sure do. He yeah. chauffeurs, right? And we were all taking naps, right? Yep. We were asleep. <laughs> yeah. We were asleep. Wow. We was in a van. <laughs> Alex probably took about five naps. Yep. <laughs> Sleep in the whole crew, the whole film crew. Right. In the van. We packed wow. in the van. My husband drove us, how long was it? Three hours? Three hours one way and in about two and a half hours back. Wow. So he did a six hour drive. Plus when we were there on location, he was getting wow. the he was getting the cameras. Mm -hmm. Wow. He the was equipment. helping us pack our stuff. He was helping me fix my hair, put my shoes on. So wow. when when you <laughs> wow. like this is this is a whole nother conversation. So entrepreneurship and being married to a person that's entrepreneur right. and i'm a woman right i'm not a man right. where i have to support my husband right. it's the flip side it's the, it's the flip side yes. so, so I, I can't talk to the married side you know because mm -hmm. you you you, you but no 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 that, but it's but, a partnership but it is a partnership it, it, regardless right. if you're married or not let's please clarify that right. it's a partnership right Right. Because if you have a friend or your village that's dedicated to you, they're yeah. going to do the same thing. I, I agree. So, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, there's different levels mm -hmm. in your village, you know, mm -hmm. um, my family, you mm -hmm. know, um, everybody's been holding it down, mm -hmm. you know, for, hey, do you need this? Do you need help here? What can mm -hmm. we do here to help you? Uh, I've got nothing but support from them. Mm -hmm. Right. And then friends that mm -hmm. are around me. Yes. You know, JD, keep pushing. That's why that's important. So mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. So back to your question. Someone mm -hmm. comes to me. I'll say don't, you know, because you got to know if you're going to be in this or not, because mm -hmm. you cannot, if it's from you mm -hmm. and it's built in you, you can't walk away from it. So what I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. I can't walk away from can't it. Walk away. And not only mm -hmm. that, but I have the will to make it happen. I have mm -hmm. the will to make sure that this comes to fruition, because you've got to understand that I'm not doing this just for me, but I'm doing this for the next generation that mm -hmm. comes after me. So with that being said, then after you know that they have the desire to do this and to see it through and that they're ready to go through the trials and tribulation of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. then great. All right, now let's talk. Let's talk about your vision mm -hmm. and what you want to do. Let's talk about the end game. So I believe in starting from what your end game is and then mm -hmm. working your way back. Mm -hmm. So if you work your way back, you essentially are putting in the action steps to make sure that you know what you want to do and so and, and a lot of times most of your successful entrepreneurs their purpose is related to the business that they start so there's this intertwining of their purpose along with their business and what they love to do <clears throat> and so once you've identified that mm -hmm. then you start making uh, the necessary adjustments to put everything in a plan your end game okay now let's start with your plan mm -hmm. I don't know how many times that my board mm -hmm. has made me go over the I, over the business plan. I wanted to say a word, but mm -hmm. it's just like, J.D., we need to change this here. Let's look at this. Mm -hmm. And it's going back and forth. This doesn't look mm -hmm. right because when you're getting investment capital, mm -hmm. it has to be right because somebody wants a return on their investment. They don't want to invest in anything that's not going to mm -hmm. be successful. Yes. So you start with the, the passion, then comes the plan. Mm -hmm. So and with your plan, it is. Okay, well, how are you going to get there? Mm -hmm. Who are you who are you going to put around you to get there? But and what are the resources that you actually yes. need? Are you going to bootstrap it? Are you going to go out to a VC? Are you going to work with angel investors? Because mm -hmm. raising capital, you and I both know, mm -hmm. is the hardest part. Oh, <laughs> I've sold property to raise capital. <laughs> right, right, right. There's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I call it. There's a sacrifice that has to be made when you're serious. Um, if you don't make a sacrifice mm -hmm. to do this, um, then in most cases, mm -hmm. you know, some people try to, there's, there's a saying, you can't have two feet. I've, I've heard this from mm -hmm. one of our board members. You can't have one foot in one boat and another foot in another boat. Mm -hmm. You got to put your foot in one boat. You've got to burn your bridge back to where you came from. That's good. Because if you don't mm -hmm. burn that bridge, mm -hmm. then you always have an out to go back or to make an excuse. That's good. So basically, there's no plan B. 
There is no plan B. Because no. once you start having plan B, plan C, plan D, then like you said, if, if that plan doesn't work out or if it's not feeling good or if it's not comfortable, right. then you're going to fall back that is correct. To, to what you have. That is correct. It's, it's like that old saying, take the mattress from behind you. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and and that and and I think what you just said is very crucial, especially for Small Business Month. Um, there are a lot of small businesses that don't have a plan B. Correct. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. no there's no plan. You know, there's no plan B. But mm -hmm. so within your but within your strategy, mm -hmm. you have to you have to be like water. You have to look at um, the the terrain. Mm -hmm. And you got to figure out, okay, well, what is the way that I can get to speed of revenue first, right? Mm -hmm. You got to establish, okay, and I'm going to, a friend of mine wrote a book called Agility Selling where he talks mm -hmm. about in order for you to, his name is Tim Ohai, mm -hmm. um, he said that if you need to be successful, you need to have clear roles and clear goals. Mm -hmm. So if your goal isn't clear, you're going to go everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got attention deficit disorder. <laughs> so Me too. I'm, I'm everywhere. Me right? too. <laughs> and I'm a Gemini. Oh, Jesus, God bless you. I'm a Taurus, so oh, stay, away. Ah. <laughs> stay away from me. Uh, Alex, what are you? Virgo. Oh, a Virgo? He's our hey. dad. Wow. <laughs> he just, he's in command. Wow. He's the leader. <laughs> he rings us back. Nah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. So you got to focus. Mm -hmm. You got to have a, you got to be so clear on your goal mm -hmm. that nobody can, Take you off course. You know what? <laughs> that is it right there. And that is my advice um, to if you are listening right now and you're you want to be an entrepreneur, even if you are an entrepreneur right now, go focus. Do not let anyone change the narrative, as a friend of mine has said. Also, one thing, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. No, it's not. And it's okay. Right. It's okay to not be an entrepreneur. You right. don't have to be an entrepreneur. That That's why people create businesses for you to work at. Right. Um, you can be a professional. Um, right. But here's the thing that I want to say is when I had worked um, at a company, I won't say the name because I don't want them to email me, <laughs> but <laughs> every single person, and I worked there as a chef, Pretty much every single person I came in contact with, they worked at this big company. They all owned their own business. Wow. Wow. I would say probably about 80% of the people that I had chef for at this company owned their own business while they were still working. Mm. And they had no intentions on leaving the business, their, right. their business. And they had no intentions on leaving their job. And I found that I've I've found a lot of entrepreneurs, especially in the tech world, they will do contract work. Mm -hmm. So they're not tied to one particular company, right. but they will float to different businesses and different companies and different jobs. And all at the same time, they're still operating their own businesses. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. Some people mm -hmm. um, take entrepreneurship as a way to... They hope about it. They, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's a hope. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've got a friend. It, his hashtag, his name is Roderick Jefferson. Hope mm -hmm. is not a strategy. Mm -hmm. I've I've heard him say it like a million times. Like mm -hmm. when we first met, I was just like, dude, like don't say it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, because he says it so much, but there's so much truth in that. Mm -hmm. Some people are just hoping, mm -hmm. but the sacrifice, you know, to take that jump and to do it, mm -hmm. like you said, not everybody could do it. Mm -mm. Um, I, you know, for a time, I wasn't sure I could do it because I was mm -hmm. so used to corporate America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I was challenged by a friend. He that said, paycheck. Yeah, that paycheck, right? <laughs> a friend of mine huh, challenged Alice. me. <laughs> that paycheck changed your life. <laughs> it, cha it, it, it does. But when you look at the long-term mm -hmm. goal and say, you know, our company, you know, mm -hmm. in four to five years, we'll have X valuation or a hundred mm -hmm. million dollar valuation, mm -hmm. which is our goal is Stygian, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. we want to change lives. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. I, I tell people, if you want to start a revolution, start it with dollars, all right? Yes. So don't, let's not talk about words or whatever. If mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm, if I'm going to change, mm -hmm. it needs to be done with dollars. Mm -hmm. um, your dollars are your weapons. They're your weapons. And so um, with those dollars, you command 
the ability to be able to terraform mm -hmm. either your community from a business perspective and the way to get there is entrepreneurship in my view. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's vital to be able to look at that, to say, you know, okay, if I'm going to do this, you're going to do it. But you, again, mm -hmm. your village, your vision's got to be succinct. The people mm -hmm. that is around you've got to be supportive, but don't put people that, that are going to smile in your face mm -hmm. and tell you, oh, you're great. You're all this. Um, one of my board members says you should not get commended for mm -hmm. what your what your job is. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you I want to talk to you about something that you and I, I don't think we ever had this conversation. Sure. So it's not so far off topic, <laughs> but I think that that you are the perfect person to probably explain this to people. Um, we and, and I don't want to get in trouble for this. So let me word it carefully. I um, look on Facebook, I look on social media as you, um, and you know, a lot of people, uh, even before then, a lot of people confuse entrepreneurship for working for another company. Hmm. And I'm not gonna say the name, but a lot of people think, oh, our company is offering me opportunity to be an entrepreneur. That's not true. I totally disagree with that. Because, and you have yeah. people that are on social media promising, oh, you could get a free car or you could get, right. you know, uh, recognized. I just got a certificate. I was recognized by my company. But then they say, and I'm an entrepreneur. My thing is you cannot be an entrepreneur while building another company when someone comes to me and they say oh i want to help you financially or i want to help you do this or i'll help you do that and i'm like okay but then they give me a website that's for another company and you just got like the right. the slash comma your name at the end i automatically like you know if it's not avon or mary Kay or amway right. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah. So can you let's and let's be very careful when we talk about this right. too. You know, but there is a difference between entrepreneurship right. and claiming you're an entrepreneur and working for another company. Right. So so mm -hmm. the, so theoretically, in my view, I think that there's and this and and let's 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 clear this out. This has nothing to do with real estate because right. real estate agents are entrepreneurs, period. Right. So we're not talking about real estate agents. We're not talking about insurance. We're not talking about hairdressers. We're talking about particular companies that promise you all of the glitz and glams and they promise you the free stuff and they promise you that you're going to right. make this ec amount of income at the, every week. And what they do is they get you to give them your money right. to promise you something that you could do. So let's just clarify that real right. quick. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to break those. I actually have names for okay. those two. I, I saw there's an, there's a entrepreneur, then there's mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Good one. So, I learned the entrepreneur um, mm -hmm. from working with the Haney Biz Group in Sacramento, who mm -hmm. helps entrepreneurs. And uh, we were talking about that some people are meant to just work mm -hmm. in a <clears throat> in a in a setting mm -hmm. uh, in corporate America, but then mm -hmm. there are entrepreneurs that are people that aren't risk averse mm -hmm. and that that have a desire to birth something mm -hmm. that can change or terraform mm -hmm. um, their world. Mm -hmm. So, um, an entrepreneur tends to be, even though you're you don't have a, a strong risk aversion to starting the company. You're still scared. You still mm -hmm. have those emotions like, am I crazy? Because mm -hmm. every night I like go to bed and I'm thinking like, did I really just do this? Yeah. Right. And, um, <laughs> Trust me. I wake up with terror. <laughs> <laughs> right. I be like, Ooh, I don't know. I don't want the sun to come right, up. <laughs> right. But I, yeah. And then mm -hmm. you and you get up in the morning and you and you know you're happy. It's mm -hmm. the happiest I've been in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, and doing this in spite mm -hmm. of um, the obstacles that mm -hmm. we might face. But an you know an entrepreneur is someone who gives value to their company. And mm -hmm. it's, not, it's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, but entrepreneurs are the very fabric, in my view, of what is needed in communities for mm -hmm. communities to grow because you mm -hmm. can lead to it can lead to more folks working. Mm -hmm. It can lead to more people uh, becoming more ingrained in their society. But not only that, but their ideas can mm -hmm. can change everything around them. You know, if they're disruptive. So, if you're an entrepreneur, great that you're you're meant to be there. But it, it, one of the things in, in society now, in most cases, you go to your university or mm -hmm. to be an employee. Let's just 
talk about it. It's systematically. Mm-hmm. You've been built to go learn how to go work for somebody. Exactly, but you still need the education. You though. still need. Oh, education's <laughs> education's vital. Education is vital. It's 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 important. Yes, you know, but I understand what you're saying. Right, yes. and, and mm-hmm. think about you know everybody in the for, fortune. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you look at most of those guys. They they left college, mm-hmm. right? Some didn't even go to college. Mm-hmm. You know, they were just smart enough and hungry enough to be mm-hmm. able to do it. They, they, but some of those, again, we got to speak real vague. Have privilege enough to do so. Everybody's not that privileged. True, and with that, and so exactly, <laughs> mm-hmm. and so with that being said, I believe that there's a, an emergence of a mm-hmm. new group of entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. angel investors, mm-hmm. and investors that are starting to come to the table mm-hmm. to recognize that if we're going to change some of the social ills in America, mm-hmm. we have to start with entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. So if we're able to get capital in the hands of capable people mm-hmm. that want to change their community, then mm-hmm. we need to look at. How do we raise more entrepreneurs per capita mm-hmm. in certain communities mm-hmm. where there are underserved populations? Mm-hmm. So speaking of that, angel investors, for some people that don't know what angel investors are, can you explain angel investors? Sure. And then if people are looking for capital and they can't go get a loan from the bank, there are alternative ways right. for you to raise capital. Angel investors, um, sometimes your small business associations um, will help you. Another thing is merchants account as well. Right. If you have a merchant account, um, pretty much if you have a bank account and a business license, you, you could get a merchant account. If you show faith in your merchant account that you have sales, you have accurate transactions, then a lot of the merchant's account will right. will give you um, funding. Right. Um, also, uh, family and friends, yeah. um, whom I've gotten in trouble with. <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed money, probably still owe some money. I don't know, I lost count. But <laughs> I really did. I'm sure I got some some people have said with me, but it's okay. We we gonna work it out, you know. And um, you know, uh, and then there's real estate. Right. You know, if you own real estate, um, that's lucrative cash for you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, also, cash advance. A lot of people don't understand. If you have a checkings account, you have a savings account. You can uh, go to your bank and do uh, um, what you would call a cash advance. A lot of them will loan you up to, you know, thousands of dollars for that. Right. Uh, so there are avenues to get money to start your um, your uh, business. Um, a lot of people think that they have to have this big business plan. <laughs> You see where I'm going in this conversation, so you could jump in at any time. They think they can have this big, beautiful business plan, and they have to have the bank behind them. And that's not necessarily true. There are alternative uh, methods to help you start your business. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so that. But you're at a whole nother level. (laughs) Well, I didn't. I didn't get to this level without having the counsel and the Mm -hmm. folks that's on my board to show me. Yes, and you talking about board, Alex? He talking about board. I'm like, (laughs) I'm like. Board. I need to. I need to come up with a board. Well, you do, actually. <laughs> actually, I do have a board. Okay. We yeah. need to have me on it. Yeah, I All need right. to have more. Okay. <laughs> Besides, uh, you know, two people. Well, when you build, you know, when you build your board, your mm-hmm. board is like your, your most important thing. One of my board members. And explain that to people that are not understanding about having a board. a board at what level in your business do you need a board yeah so it depends okay it, it, first of all it's going to come down to your company structure right? okay so mm-hmm. you know if you're s corp or a c corp mm-hmm. you know you're going to have a board what if you're an llc it's totally different okay so mm-hmm. you're not required to have a board okay um, but mm-hmm. it does not um mean that you cannot have advisors mm-hmm. right and it also depends on, on on those folks so you want to have a group of advisors folks that you mm-hmm. will tell you the way it is you know and you know and then go from there so that's really really important and so normally um in your board you want to establish folks that have different core competencies mm-hmm. so you want to have folks that really understand tech and technology mm-hmm. i've got it you have to have ai right alex i refer to alex alex ai you know, right you, you gotta you have you gotta have <laughs> alex right yes yeah that's important you've got to have your you got to have your money team those yes, are folks you, that know how to raise money mm-hmm, right now mm-hmm. believe it or not that's one of my biggest gaps mm-hmm. is raising capital. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. But I have folks on my board that's mm-hmm. done it before. They've okay. Done startups and so mm-hmm. great. They compensate for the weakness that mm-hmm. I have. Mm-hmm. Then 
you want to have folks that are good with structure. Mm-hmm. You want to have folks that are good with marketing. Mm-hmm. Because it all comes down to people and process yes. at the end of the day. So mm-hmm. if you got great people and you got great process and you got a great vision, mm-hmm. then you're going to see amazing things happen. So there's an angel investor. That is someone who mm-hmm. uh, is a person that has accumulated wealth over time mm-hmm. and they invest mm-hmm. in they invest in small business. Then you have mm-hmm. VCs. We all know what a venture capitalist is. There's organizations that do that. But then mm-hmm. also, I've learned you know a, a whole nother spectrum of mm-hmm. ways of, to raise money. Um, I met with the CEO of Liberty Capital about mm-hmm. or the Liberty Liberty Power mm-hmm. about five years ago, and it's it's a fast growing utility company. And what they did is they went and collected thousands. Mm-hmm. Of signatures wow. during the deregulatory when there was deregulation in mm-hmm. the utilities mm-hmm. and they went and got signatures to say we will go with you if you can reduce our utility rates by x mm-hmm. and, he, and they went to uh, the company that um, provided all the power mm-hmm. and that's how liberty power wow. they leverage that with banks wow so you could use different mm-hmm. things to leverage so leveraging is good leveraging like for is me good. i cook <laughs> I get a lot of things done right. by bartering. Bartering has been probably one of my number two strategies of capital. Right. I've been able to barter a lot with food. Bartering, bartering is yes. a, bartering is a good thing. And mm-hmm. then there's there's a mm-hmm. I, I never heard of a private placement memorandum. One of my board members said mm-hmm. we're going to do a PPM, and I was like, mm-hmm. "What the heck is that?" Yeah, what is you it? You know, so I had to I had to like mm-hmm. figure out like what is what is it right? Mm-hmm. And so. You know, I discovered that a personal, you know, excuse me, a private placement memorandum is a mm-hmm. is a is paper and how you 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 raise capital for mm-hmm. your organization. Wow. You know, and mm-hmm. I never knew that that type of instrument exists. Then mm-hmm. you have a, a convertible note, you mm-hmm. know, where you say, "I'll, you know, for twenty percent, I will um, give you X amount mm-hmm. in a year and pay mm-hmm. you back at this rate." It's paper. There's there's all types of different things that you can do. So the most popular one. And then after this, we're gonna take a break because we we could talk about this all day. Yeah, definitely. And we could go deeper than this. We're we're actually being really nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what about like this whole Shark Tank? Like I love Shark Tank. By the way, I love the profit. Um, all of those shows yeah. that we see. Um, the the Shark Tank theory. That's not a new. Thing. No, it's, I, would I, you consider that angel investors or? It's a group. Well, Shark Tank is a group of sharks trying mm-hmm. to find the best idea, compete for it, and then yeah. monetize that bad boy. But they do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They so, really do that in the business world. Yeah. So somebody saw that, extrapolated, or excuse mm-hmm. me, extracted it out. Mm-hmm. They took that and then created Shark Tank. I. I think that that's a macrocosm of mm-hmm. what we should get back to in our local communities mm-hmm. of creating local shark tanks. Oh, wow. Where um, we can have folks come in that actually mm-hmm. understand in angel investing and VC mm-hmm. capital. Mm-hmm. And that can folks pitch. legitimate ideas. That can right. pitch their ideas. I agree. Mm-hmm. They can pitch their ideas. But then, you know, also take people through a process of how to pitch their ideas. You mm-hmm. know, you know I, I have the opportunity um, to be speaking with Chris Johnson, mm-hmm. African-American male who... Uh, started a company called Rapid Brands, mm-hmm. and this stuff is in Walmart now. Mm-hmm. You know, and he was on Shark Tank. Wow. You know, but you know, we can take that mm-hmm. that general structure and mm-hmm. take it to the local community because there's tons of entrepreneurs right now that mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. they're frustrated. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm gonna get on a break, but real quick, I learned how to pitch. You want to know how I, p- I learned how to pitch? Oh. So long, long, long time ago. Are you ready for this, Alex? <laughs> it's a good story. I used to sell clothes to back to the uh, consignment shops. Wow. So my girlfriend and I, <laughs> shout out to Jamil, we used to go to the uh, Goodwills, Alex Outen, Castro Valley, right. Wana Creek, like the really nice ritzy areas. And... At this time, I knew what Burberry was. I knew what Gucci was. I knew what all that stuff was because my mom used to work downtown Oakland in the in the old back in the Plurie right. Catwell day. <laughs> Catwell, yeah. Yeah. Catwell. So yeah. we would go. We would look at le- labels. We would get the Louis Vuitton wallets and um, another girlfriend of I, mine who, unfortunately, she passed away. So I don't want to mention her name. Bless her soul. Um, we used to go to the Goodwills out in the nice areas and we used to get hats and shoes and purses and all kinds of stuff and we would take the bus 
the 83 mm. and ride it all the way to Berkeley. Wow. <laughs> and go sell those clothes to the consignment shop. So I had to, I learned how to pitch because I had to learn how to sell them right. the clothes. Right. I had to learn how to put together certain type of clothes or certain type of um, outfits right. and I had to know how which consignment shop that I could get the most from or go back to this one or go back to that one right. so I had to learn how to do this on my own fast forward to a couple years later um, some, I was doing a project in school and it was a pitch project and I, it just came so natural, natural and easy for me and then I remembered I said oh my goodness that was actually what I was doing at the consignment <laughs> shop since I was right. pitching Wow. Why you should purchase these particular clothes from me. Right. You didn't know me from Adam, and I come in with Louis Vuitton and, and all these name brands right. and walk out with money to go pay my rent. That's entrepreneurship. That's entrepreneurship. <laughs> I'm with that 100. So that's how I learned how to pitch. Now my pitch is completely different. I yeah. told someone, they probably hear this, I don't care. I told them, I said, you need me. We were in the elevator, and this is someone high. This is someone that literally can change the scope of what the city is doing. Right. And I don't care. I'm in the elevator with them, and I have my child. And I told them, I said, you need me. Right. So you need to make a meeting with me. We need to have a meeting this time and that time. Mm -hmm. And next time you see me, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, X, Y, Z. And they were staring at me the right. same way. See that's they was looking at me like okay I saw them again right. and I said I told you you need me right and it was like yeah you you right I do need them and guess what I saw them again <laughs> at right. another meeting and I'm sitting there like yeah I told you you need me that's, that's now right. that's my elevator pitch see, that's see you got see you doing what I call SP <laughs> that's a selling with a purpose. <laughs> Right, because you got a lot of people that's out there selling, but don't know how to sell with a purpose. Right, <laughs> the selling with a purpose it just comes naturally. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, some people we could talk about that. That's another thing I'll yeah, talk about. Yeah, but you later, have to be confident. I agree. You have to know that you know. Yeah. To know that you know that you know, and that's what's missing from entrepreneurship as well, and also from small businesses because we get beat down. Mm -hmm. We get beat down. Yeah. We get told no. We get uh, people. Oh, you're not the latest trend or somebody else selling it better. Somebody else could do it better. We get that all the time. Right. That's when you have to know that you know that you know that. No, you need me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And, and not only that, but I mean, it creates, I mean, when you're solving a problem, mm -hmm. see a lot of entrepreneurs don't recognize if you don't yes. solve a problem, you're irrelevant to your customer. Say that again. If you don't solve a problem for your customer, you are irrelevant so yes. your relevance, your reach, and your scale is all going to be dependent on your ability to be able to solve your customer problems. Booyah. We're going to go to a break on that all one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say Chef Tobias Cook's <laughs> Kitchen Conversations. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of Stockton.org. I'm being so unprofessional right now. That was... Say that one more time. I think we're going to go to the break. We're going to say okay. that. If you cannot solve your customer problems, you will not increase your relevance, your reach, and your scale, period. You have got to be solving a customer problem to be successful. You can't sell just to be selling. you got to be solving a problem, period. Chef Tobias <laughs> Cooks with Kitchen Conversations, the voice of Stockton.org. We'll be right back after a short break. This is Darius Oliver, and you're listening to 92.1 KXVS, The Voice of Stockton.
listening to the Voice of Stockton on KXVS. dog moving in with a human i didn't know how it would work turns out my human's pretty entertaining for instance every time i give my human his ball he throws it as far as he can and i'm like dude that's your ball so i go get it but he just throws it again i gotta say though the more he does it the funnier it is i love my human a person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet be that person adopt brought to you by the ad council and the shelterpetproject.org here at KXVS, bro, 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 bro. broadcasting casting from Stone Tube Studios is the voice of Stockton. Chef Tavares cooks kitchen conversation. We was just having such an awesome time here, uh, talking. And um, what's going on with me? I don't know what's going on. Sorry, you guys. All right, so introduce yourself one more time. J.D. Stewart, CEO of Stygian Corporation. We are the first uh, spirits consolidator. We can do spirits for everybody, restaurants, celebrities, uh, and we do it all through technology. So our first uh, product is going to be bourbon. So we're really excited about our launch. It's going to be coming up over the next couple of months. And... Excited to be partnering with you at some point to create some bourbon-based products oh. <laughs> and do some stuff with restaurants, create their own private label. So, Yes, let's yeah. talk about that a little bit. We had a great conversation. Don't give them the secrets. But we had a great, great uh, conversation about that of um, uh, me coming on board, helping out with your brand. Right, right. Um, and give them your brand one more time. Stygian Corporation. So... Yeah, and tell them a little bit more about what you're going to be doing. Yeah, so with a cl so with a click of a uh, of your mouse or with your laptop, if you want to jump in the spirits industry, and uh, if you're a marketing department for a corporation or if you're a celebrity, we'll be able to private label and scale up your brand quickly, efficiently, um, and then also take you know take out the headache that you have with uh, your legal. Um, uh, issues that you have doing you know cross state mm -hmm. business i uh, will get you into distribution as well as help you with your your sales wow now see that that's really really something new because you're you're like you said earlier you're solving a problem big time yeah so you're offering your customers a solution to their problem correct all right i love it in the spirit world that is correct so vodka uh bourbon whiskey you name it our first flagship product mm -hmm. uh our proof of concept is going to be stygian black bourbon mm -hmm. so we're really excited about that and our platform consolidates and brings everything together so everybody will sit back and say wow you guys you know brought this to the table mm -hmm. and so uh, we'll be doing that for all of our customers and clients corporate uh fortune 1000 companies uh, celebrities and also nonprofits mm -hmm. that are trying to raise money so we really have to get busy, especially on, oh, this is so exciting. It's almost like a little Google kind of uh, uh, thing because you're bringing it with exactly. technology. So with that, it could come with logos and Every, labels we, we, and launch do, parties. We, and Yes, we do all the labeling mm -hmm. for our clients and customers. We do. Mm -hmm. We work with the ATF. We mm -hmm. work with, uh, for instance, in California, ABC. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're able to put together the total package. Uh, mm -hmm. So you come to us, one click of the button, uh, we're able to uh, build that for you and to drive value. So um, you can monetize what you're trying to do as well as take advantage of, you know, the opportunity of our 
back end, which is immense, mm-hmm. you know, which is taking time to develop. And finally, uh, we're to the point now where it's taken a while to get mm-hmm. here. And uh, we're very, very close to launch. Give me your information one more time. J.D. Stewart's Digging Corporation. Uh, our website will be fully up and running uh, tonight. It's www.stigingcorp.com. And uh, if you want to email us, it's info at stigingcorp.com. All right, so you heard that the 209 new business opportunity, new business development. If you have an interest in the spirit world, you know where to go. Um, go ahead, get online, go on to Facebook, ta- uh, go ahead, inbox him, give him your information, and start that going on. So, in honor of Small Business Month for May, thank you for coming on. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. <laughs> we had a great intellectual conversation. If you missed that, um, log on to uh, voiceofstockton.org or Chef Tobias Cooks on Facebook page. Um, I also will be rerunning that again. All right. All right. Anything else we should talk about before we get out of uh, here? All I can say is hashtag Stygian, hashtag Suburban. Let's get this going. Yes, right. yes. Okay, Chef Tobias Cooks with Kitchen Conversation, the voice of Stockton. Also, look me up on YouTube. Oh, one more thing before I get out of here, Alex. Let me give a shout out to Her Life Magazine. Yay! <laughs> they had an iron lunch yesterday. I was so um, just honored to be one of the cover girls. Um, that's been on that magazine, a uh, small business entrepreneur. Um, so let's give a shout out to Her Life Magazine um, for that and for supporting small businesses as well. Uh, so we're going to go, right? Let's do it. Okay. All thank right. you for visiting us today. We had a great time. And of course, we're going to continue this conversation probably on Facebook Live. But <laughs> 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 the voice us, doctor.org. Get on there. Support, support small businesses. Get on out 209. You have something to do. We ready, Alex? All right. Yay. Yay. Peace. <laughs> you don't usually get a stock tip from a 16 year old, but I'm here to tell you about a different kind of stock. It's called Better Futures, a stock for social change that's not about making money. Instead, you invest to help students like me go to college, which ends up making the future better for all of us. My name is Alicia, and I'm your dividend. Invest in Better Futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. KXVS. The Voice of Stockton, live. The Voice of Stockton, at Stone Soup Studio. KXVS.